Hi everyone, this is my guide to using learning maps in the classroom. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the handle at Hannah Tyerman. And there's also my blog address there, hannahruthtyerman.wordpress.com. After you've watched this video, you'll be able to access templates and um, other hints and tips for using learning maps in the classroom. Okay, so I'm going to show you three main examples of how I've used learning maps so far um, and three different ways. Okay, so this is an example of a poet um, learning map that I did. I teach English and we were starting a new topic. Um, we were starting poetry for the first time. Um, we'd had um, a week or so introduction lessons about poetry, how to approach it, and we were going to be looking at our first poet, William Blake. So what I did was created a two-sided learning mat, A3, in colour, laminated them, um, so that I always have the learning mat as stimulus for discussion, um, which is mainly what this one was used for. So it had a timeline of key events, quotes from Blake and also other poets at the time, images related to the main themes of the poems we were going to be exploring. The second side had the actual challenges and activities and tasks on it. Um, it took me quite a while to create all this, but I have ch shared the templates with you on my blog. Um, and it means that now all you need to do is replace it with your own images and your own activities related to your own subjects. So I gave them a little bit of information about the um, set of poems that we're going to be looking at. And I gave them questions to begin your thinking. Um, I then gave them their mission, um, which was putting together something independently, collaboratively and um, the task was fully explained there. It meant that any verbal explanation I gave was backed up by written information. Um, it was also presented in a really visual way and students could then refer back to the learning mat throughout the lesson or the series of lessons to check that they were on track with the task. Um, the other half of this side, um, I included images um, that might spark discussion and what I wanted them to do was connect what we were doing with other subjects or with other knowledge that they had. Um, so how could this artwork relate to the poems you've been presented with? Um, I think learning maps are, can be really visual um, in this kind of way and can really spark discussion as an entry to a topic um, or just to engage learners who are a little bit fearful, particularly when it comes to poetry. Okay, the second kind I'd like to show you is this proofreading mat. Um, I've got several kinds of mats that help with proofreading. Um, this would be the last one that students would use before they hand in an essay to me. Because I wanted to heighten the level of essays I was receiving, um, I wanted students to make sure that they checked everything they had to. I adjusted this according to what mistakes my GCSE students were making. Um, I printed it on colour, laminated it, left it in the classroom and it now meant that any time students were doing essays either in class or at home and then bringing them in, they could drop into the classroom, pick up a proofreading mat, ensure that each of the boxes had been ticked on their essay before handing it in. So it meant that I was reducing a lot of the common mistakes that I kept seeing. Um, don't get me wrong, there were still mistakes, but it certainly reduced a lot of them. Um, I think this was better than the checklist I had before, um, just because it's engaging. It's colourful and it's one of those simple strategies to just engage learners with the process of proofreading. Again, I've shared a template with you on my blog, so if you want to take a look um, and use it, feel free. The final thing I'd like to show you um, is one where I've actually used it that students write on it. So this one wouldn't be laminated. I'd have a colour copy on the board and then students would have their black and white copies to work from. Um, I devised a symbol system so that each of the activities had a different symbol with them. Um, I felt that vis this visual element really helped um, the more visual learners to know where we were in the lesson and what kind of activity was required. Um, so the boss meant that we were doing a movement activity and that we would have to get involved. The pen activity usually meant individual writing. Um, the chalk meant an activity where they'd have to kind of do something a little bit more active on their sheet rather than just writing in sentences. And the thought bubble meant that they'd just have to get some thinking skills going. Um, so you can see the range of activities there. If you want to look at it more closely, take a look on my blog. 
Um, the second one, I had lots of different statements. Students had to sort them, categorise them, highlight them, share them, colour code them, add um, scenes and quotes. And it meant that they could always keep this. So I printed it all on A3. They had plenty of space um, and each area of the lesson was clearly defined. Um, this kind of thing really helps with stretch and challenging lessons. If students were ready to move on, the next activity was there for them. They could visually see um, where they had to go to next, um, what activity was an extension task, what task they just needed to move on to, and they all moved at pretty much their own pace, apart from when I interrupted to stop them to do the whole class um, discussions and things. Um, the only other symbol on this page was my present for peer assessment. Um, I also have two smiling heads um, for working in pairs and then four smiling heads for working in a small group. Um, so the symbols really helped. Um, I think the visual elements of this um, students really enjoyed. Okay, so that was my really quick guide to learning maths. Please feel free to take a look at my website to find out more, hannahruthtryman.wordpress.com and you can download templates from there. Um, I think the reason I use learning maths are because they're engaging, useful and reusable. Okay, I'd really love to know how you get on and if you've got any further templates to share with me, um, I'd really love that too. Okay, good luck. Thank you.